Dr. Walt Gall is here, and he is a uh, biotech consultant, and he's going to share his story with us. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, the invitation to the Brett Committee, and it's a pleasure to be back here. It's been uh, quite a quite a while since I've been back on campus, uh, 11 years in fact, uh, so it's a pleasure to be back here. I look forward to the Q&A session. Uh, so today I'm going to touch on a few themes uh, to kind of step you through a uh, academic postdoc, uh, different stints in industry, both uh, large corporate as well as startups, and, uh, and then take you through uh, my transition to consulting. Uh, and as I step you through that, I'll uh, really touch on a few themes, uh, really around interdisciplinary teamwork, uh, the importance of that, and, and really my uh, draw to that environment, uh, as well as uh, what really makes up the entrepreneurial ecosystem, whether it's a large company really trying to innovate or whether it's a small company trying to get financing and trying to get a product out the door. Uh, and, uh, and then lastly, there's a, uh, you know, building on what Linda was uh, mentioning about learning and, and uh, really being passionate about certain areas, uh, I'm really uh, very curious and continue to be passionate about uh, how software platforms can be utilized at the interface of technology platforms uh, in different settings, whether it's biotech um, or what have you. So I'll start off with uh, where I did my postdoc at UNC, uh, where I was uh, really drawn to an uh, interdisciplinary lab where this lab contained uh, enge biomedical engineers that knew how to build certain customized microscopes for uh, innovative live cell imaging uh, in Ted Salmon's lab and uh, also interacted with computer scientists at Rogue Code and MATLAB for you know, following kinetic cores, in this case uh, looking at cell division. And, uh, and I came with a biochemistry and genetics background uh, looking at uh, some important questions around an oncogene called uh, HEC1, uh, where we were looking at the phosphoregulation uh, of this uh, kinetic core protein as it relates to dynamic microtubule attachment and detachment. And the reason I have this up here is just to show uh, not only my fascination with cell biology, but also this interdisciplinary environment to have a teamwork uh, to really, you know, address these uh, interesting challenges as far as, uh, you know, how regulation uh, is actually orchestrated in such a complex process, but really what it takes to actually, you know, address those problems uh, with each of those uh, individuals' backgrounds. And uh, also at UNC, I was uh, very interested in uh, utilizing the entrepreneurial resources within that uh, university. I had a taste of uh, industry because we would get compounds from different companies uh, while we were at Ted Salmon's lab, uh, you know, as far as looking at their effects on cell division and uh, as far as microtubule dynamics, et cetera. And, uh, but I also uh, was uh, very sort of outgoing and ambitious about using uh, the resources as it relates to the tech transfer office, uh, the business school had a variety of different activities uh, re regarding uh, startup ventures. And uh, so I got uh, a lot of uh, sort of on-the-job training, if you will, moonlighting uh, when I can uh, around, uh, you know, contributing to business plans and really understanding the stakeholders uh, that are involved in actually starting companies. And so I, I got a, a fair amount of experience with that uh, as I uh, was moving through uh, the latter stages of my fellowship and uh, also became a member of uh, the Carolina Student Biotech Network, which is very similar to what I actually did here in the early days. There was a, a student committee uh, here at Vanderbilt where we actually wrote a survival guide for uh, graduate students when I was here at Vanderbilt. Uh, so I was always interested in sort of, um, you know, reaching out uh, to different, uh, you know, stakeholders within the, uh, you know, actual uh, university community uh, that were interested in this sort of transition, whether it's alternative careers, uh, or actually uh, starting a new venture. And uh, so I had, through networking uh, in that community, in Research Triangle, you know, whether it was UNC or you know, our affiliation with Duke with that uh, postdoc student committee, uh, I got to know different executives within the Research Triangle area. And I, I got tapped on the shoulder to uh, come uh, actually consult with uh, Beckton Dickinson, a very large uh, medical device firm, uh, that's headquartered in Research Triangle as far as their business development division. And this was a great setting because this was interfaced with the technology teams that uh, essentially were working on uh, technologies uh, five, ten years out. And we were also looking at licensing opportunities. But most importantly, this was an education on really coming in with a scientific perspective on really you know, innovative platforms such as the BD Discovery platform 
that had a variety of applications, both for organic growth as far as development of diagnostics uh, in the antimicrobial testing uh, environment, but also for the lab services world uh, with regards to cell media optimization, and uh, as well as for drug screening as far as uh, phospho screens that, that, that was uh, dedicated to this platform. And I was charged with really uh, looking at this from a market-driven approach uh, and doing a commercialization analysis. And uh, essentially that allowed me to interact with uh, financial uh, you know, executives within BD, you know, looking at budgets of these different programs, as well as leads on technology teams uh, that were responsible for the different uh, commercial applications of this platform, and then ultimately doing voice of the customer research as it relates to you know, the physicians that would actually use this technology or you know, lead scientific directors that would you know, utilize this program in their drug development program. So that was a fantastic education where I was uh, basically held on for over a year doing that. And, uh, and then I moved uh, to a biotech startup. I was recruited uh, to a startup that was actually incubated within Beckton Dickinson. So I was actually familiar with this uh, technology that was based on uh, mass spec. It was uh, a new area of metabolomics. And essentially, uh, this was a uh, startup within a startup opportunity where I was actually brought in uh, to their diagnostics division after they had developed a third generation mass spec platform for doing metabolomics. And this company was called Metabolon. And uh, they wanted uh, to bring me in because uh, essentially this platform was disease agnostic, uh, but they wanted to develop diagnostic products. That, that's why the venture capitalists actually funded the company, was to not just offer lab services you know, to the government, pharma sectors, and academia, uh, but also to develop diagnostics. So I was uh, charged with uh, doing market research in the very beginning for several months. I felt like I was in med school for like several months learning about every disease known to man and uh, you know, trying to figure out what the market-driven business cases were for actually developing diagnostics. And uh, we identified a couple of opportunities in prostate cancer aggressivity and another area called insulin resistance. Insulin resistance, uh, as many of you know, probably in the audience, is a pervasive condition that is upstream of many Western chronic diseases, uh, such as type 2 diabetes, uh, type 1 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease, kidney disease, liver disease, uh, Alzheimer's disease, and about seven dif different epithelial cancers as far as aggressivity. So a very relevant medical condition, but really something that wasn't readily measured in the, the marketplace. Uh, and so. This was a challenging opportunity from a market point of view because uh, you know, this was a condition that was sort of left shifted from something you would normally diagnose with glucose, uh, for example, with diabetes. But the uh, unmet need was that about uh, the average time a diabetic actually goes diagnosed is about five years. They've already had the disease because of the asymptomatic nature. And so we uh, and my team, we developed uh, basically a, a discovery and validation strategy to identify uh, small molecule markers on using Metabolon's Metabolomics platform to identify early markers of not only development of diabetes, but development of dysglycemia, so the pre-diabetes stage. And can you actually identify circulating markers uh, that increase the accuracy, the sensitivity of identifying a severely insulin-resistant patient that's on their path you know, towards either aggressive cardiovascular risk or diabetes or the like? And, uh, the other part of that, not only doing R&D, but also uh, scientific affairs, managing alliances with uh, large consortia of researchers as well as key opinion leaders, we also had the opportunity to investigate some basic mechanisms of these markers, alpha-hydroxybutyrate and phosphocholine. These uh, names were two of the prominent biomarkers of insulin resistance. And the interesting uh, sort of conclusion from that work that was in that publication that was published in Diabetes earlier this year is that these markers also had an effect on pancreatic beta cell function as far as insulin secretion. So it actually shed light on this uh, elusive bridge between the development of insulin resistance and ultimately pancreatic beta cell dysfunction that leads to diabetes. So this was an important step in not only developing a commercially viable test as far as something that could be uh, put into the marketplace as a mass spec multivariate metabolomics test, a very innovative product that can't be transferred you know, traditionally to a uh, large laboratory instrument, but something that could be fit into an esoteric lab uh, that's focused on cardiometabolic uh, disease management and prevention. But also working with key opinion leaders like at Joslin Diabetes Center, uh, many different medical centers across the US and Europe, at identifying these markers, but also asking the mechanistic questions of what these markers are actually doing. 
and also tying them to clinical outcomes, which is very important for uh, actually getting your technology adopted into the medical healthcare system. And so I just uh, put this up here as uh, press releases talking about the uh, business development aspect of, okay, you've actually done this work, you've actually demonstrated and validated that these markers are relevant uh, to a condition, and essentially, uh, you also have to commercialize this, and so I was charged with uh, doing about a year and a half uh, business development effort, uh, securing term sheets in Japan, Europe, and the US as it relates to trying to commercialize this into the marketplace, and we were successful at doing that. And uh, that was a imp very important experience to understand all the different stakeholders uh, that are involved for success uh, in that setting, whether it's the regulatory uh, discussions that you're having uh, or the uh, discussions with chief medical officers at healthcare systems as to why they would actually adopt your technology, as well as business development partners at you know, uh, organizations that are looking at your technology as far as licensing it in. So understanding all of that landscape as well as the internal challenges of getting this uh, product through uh, the hoop. Uh, was a, a great experience. And so with that experience, uh, I uh, actually started my own consulting business, uh, and this really was on the coattails of a talk I gave at a uh, Lipid conference on telling the whole story. It was the first time I was actually tapped to give a 50-minute talk on what I'd done at Metabolon, and uh, essentially, uh, you know, CEOs of pharmaceutical companies that were at these conferences, you know, I was having discussions with them as to how I could actually help them with their phase two studies as far as a biomarker-driven strategy. And so that started my consulting business where I'm now working with uh, CEOs and executive teams on uh, essentially uh, looking at proprietary formulations, in this case an omega-3 formulation where there's a uh, formulation of three protective fatty acids uh, that are a part of the pentanoic omega-3 family uh, that essentially uh, lower triglycerides and lower LDL cholesterol as well as VLDL. And uh, this is an area that's exciting for me because of the combinatorial opportunities around this uh, therapeutic. Uh, the other area, and I'll close with this, is essentially uh, an area that's uh, around uh, big data analytics. So with Metabolon, uh, we were dealing with big data as it relates to metabolomics. Uh, at Ted Salmon's lab, we were dealing with big data as far as all the life cell imaging that we had to crunch through to, to really uh, process that at the software level. And now I'm moving into a really exciting frontier around cognitive computing, which is one of the pieces of the big data landscape that's really at the cutting edge of essentially what is what we call biologically inspired computing. And this is an application that has applications in the intelligence community, aerospace, supply chain management, uh, business intelligence, competitive intelligence, et cetera. And it also has applications in healthcare where we've done a collaboration with Mount Sinai where we actually can use this with reams of data that's coming from example, uh, for example, from an echocardiogram where we're actually looking at uh, you know, a model-free analysis using this uh, cognitive computing approach where we're actually looking at 90% accuracy of def, you know, discriminating between different uh, cardiovascular conditions uh, as it relates to accuracy. And if you compare that tr to traditional statistics, it's a 90% versus a 54%. Uh, uh, top ranking uh, nomogram is around 75%. So there's a lot of opportunities here as far as uh, moving forward with uh, the different industry vertical applications of this technology, and I'm uh, helping with uh, the equity financing of this company, as well as its strategic planning for launching these products. Uh, with that, I'll close and uh, look forward to the Q&A.